What's up, all Power Ass crew? What are we doing today? Ta da! PosiLock. Now, for those of you who don't know, a PosiLock is a device that replaces the vacuum CAD system on the front axle of YJs and Mini XJs. If you've got that vacuum actuated CAD system on your front axle, it's eventually it's going to give you problems. They all do. So, uh, that's a simple solution right there. We're going to put that bad boy in and I'm going to show you how. Let's go. See right there, I've got my 5 8 hole, and what I did was took this long screwdriver. Says, Yeah, yeah, I want to put it about right there, and then I go here to be sure there's nothing in the way for me to run me a bolt through there. I put my L bracket in to mount the pull knob. But there's the hole, be sure you don't damage anything as you drill through. I bought that posi lock used and did not come with a mountain bracket that goes under the dash. I'm just going to make one. This hole right here is going to be three quarter inch for the cable to go through under the dash. Uh, and probably about quarter inch right through here. Give me a place to put a bolt through. Should be all I need. Here's a little tip for you. If you want your hole along a certain center line on angle iron, flat stock, or whatever, and you can get to the edge of it, take your calipers, set it where you want it, and put one end up here like this and just drag it back and forth like this. You'll see that it describes your little line. There's your center line, so I put a hole like here and here, whatever, to give you what you need. Ta-da! And from the looks of it, you would think I've never done metal work in my life, because it is completely wobby jawed and off-centered and everything else, but who cares? So I thought about throwing me a little bit of paint on it and make it all pretty, but you know what? It kind of matches the Jeep, so I'm just going to let it ride. It ain't got to be pretty, it's just got to work. Ta-da! Couple self-tapping screws running up through the little metal bar that's under the dash, and we're good to go. Mm-hmm. I can hear it now. Somebody down the comments. Oh my gosh! I can't believe it. you're so lazy. You didn't put some paint on it. Yo, this ain't no show rig. Let's get that cable installed now. So now I'm going to take off that nut right there, slide all the way over in the cable, get that off, and this right here too. What we're going to have to do is feed it through the bracket first, but not feed the cable through the firewall. Slide all this right here back on. And also, here, I've already got me a grommet pre-installed for the hole that's coming through the firewall. Trying not to hit the camera. Now, we've got the cable hanging outside here. I'll probably have to feed it back up through the bracket some before I push it through the hole right there. But now i got to feed the bolt on that holds it to the bracket or actually i meant nut and lock washer that's what i meant yep slide your washer on first we go nut on second you can see the nut and the washer right there but i'm not gonna screw it up onto the bracket yet because i gotta run the end of my cable through the firewall if you make this solid by go ahead and bolting it down it's gonna make it harder on you to flex the cable around do what you need to do so go ahead and start feeding it through the firewall and once you get there, then you can take run the nut and the washer up. You should be good to go then. Now, as it comes through the firewall, it's going to come out. It's going to get all up into your intake and stuff, depending on where you drill your hole at to come through. So, come out, guide it downward towards your axle, and it'll feed through a lot better. And once you get it pointed down, just keep pulling. Then you got it all coiled up underneath here. Push it on through. Push my grommet back a little bit. And see, so this is why you don't want that solid yet, because you may have to push it back a little bit to get your cable straight. There we go. Alright, hit the camera. That's a 5 8 grommet, if anybody needs to know. And there we go. Now, pick this on up. Or I have my CP in here one time. Let me put another one back in. Right there. And that's probably going to be all in the way of a transfer case shifter, looks like. I want to figure something out about that. We'll see. It might be a shorter shifter. Now, the directions I downloaded online showed putting it underneath the uh, light switch. But the problem with that is, when you run through the firewall right there, you got to be really careful. 
Now the problem with drilling through right here, you've got to be crazy careful because on the other side of the firewall right there is your Jeep's computer. If you mess up and drill through that, you've got a problem. I recommend you leaving that loose for right now. Don't tighten it all up against your mounting bracket because as you move the cable under the Jeep, it's going to want to rotate through your firewall right here. So this will make it bind up. So once you get it mounted to the differential, this will find its natural place. Then you come in and tighten it up. Next step, we're going to mount this to this. But don't forget that. Now before we slide the cable through here, you need to look at something. This piece right here, notice it's got that offset. That offset goes toward your cable like that. So now we're going to slide the cable in, slide it through that hole in your fork, your shift fork. Now right there, there's a set of grooves. Let me pull the cable back out and show you. See those grooves right there? We've got little keys, little E-keys or snap rings or whatever it is you want to call them that snap onto those. This one right here is going to be your stop key which means whenever you pull the thing on the inside of the dash it pulls the cable back this way which moves your shift fork but that ring right there the outside one butts against this right here stopping it it's telling you hey that's as far as that goes these two right here are what hold this in place so we start to feed this through and make sure your offset is going toward the cable. See the offset? Go toward the cable. Feed it through. It comes through where the switch goes. And now I can see my first groove down inside there. I'm going to put my snap ring here and here on both sides. Look, y'all just want to deal with me back in a minute because I try to keep this thing in the camera frame and snap this in at the same time. Point is, it goes on those grooves on the cable. Be back in a minute. So what I'm doing is, is taking these needle nose vice grips, barely, barely holding that clip, getting a bite on it, going down inside there and putting it into those grooves. Right there, I pushed it a little bit, it's about halfway on. Then I take the end of the pliers and push. Boom, snaps right in place. And now I turn the clips around this side there to be sure that they're seated properly. Because if you can freely turn them while they're on that shaft, that means they're engaged. If they're binding and not completely on the shaft, it'd be really hard to turn. So now I take push this back, button it against that clip, move this whole thing back. I don't know if the camera's gonna pick it up or not. Or turns the other groove. So you have to take your shift fork, push it back against the cable, and butt it against. Get back so you can see it, maybe. You can see those two clips inside there. This will slide over against those two clips. So now you can get to the one that's right down inside there. Because what you'll be careful of if that ring doesn't, snap ring doesn't snap in place, it'll allow that shaft to slide inside that fork and then we'll properly engage and disengage the uh, cab collar. Permatex or RTV, whatever you want to call it. Go around the threads so it'll have any type of uh, you know, your differential fluid stuff leaking out of it. Some people say you should use that uh, thread sealer for it, like a uh, lock type brand, whatever it is. Okay, we need to put some on those threads right there as well, but here's the deal we got to set the cable travel. So what I need to do is go inside the Jeep, pull the cable on the dash to make this right here retract all the way over this way, then push it, make it come this way to kind of see my travel to set that. So actually it would be best if I put this on the driver's side of the Jeep, then I won't have to run back and forth. Yeah, that'd be better. So now I'm gonna pull the cable inside and you should see that retract back. So what happens, 
So what happens, you know those clips we put on? That very first clip, I don't doubt the camera picking it up, to be honest with you. Because it's kind of dark inside there. But that first clip we put on, you got the clip on this side, then you got the next clip, then of course you got the one over here. The one here and here, are the, of course, hold the pork in place. The one here, then the next one over is a stop key, so to speak, or a stopper. It prevents this, the travel this way. Now I'm going to push the cable all the way in and see where it stops this way. So what we'll have to do is adjust this piece right here back and forth till we get that perfect travel. That we get full travel this way and full travel this way. looks pretty good where it's at right there because whenever you push the cable it's pushing it this way of course moving this arm over but the end of the switch has got a I guess you might say the stopper the little button inside the switch here the end of this rod as it pushes through is hitting the button inside that switch which uh, makes the circuit happen here So I'm getting there and pull it again. And I can see that key is actually buttoned right on the aluminum on this right here. So actually it's good. So I'm going to count a few threads back as I unscrew it, so I put me a little bit of this uh, RTV in there to seal those threads. So right there, one, I'll turn it, one, skeeter after me, two, I'll go ahead and put a little thread locker on there, not thread locker, but thread seal, Permatex, RTV, whatever you want to call it. If you push it into the threads, then as you screw it back on, it'll distribute it inside the threads to help seal it off to prevent any of your um, differential fluid from coming out. Now we go one, two. Now, one more time, we're going to test it. I'll push and pull. If it does exactly what it's supposed to, I'll take the jam nut, butt it up against it. Okay, it's pushed all the way over. And the knob on the inside of the Jeep, I can't push it in anymore. Just to try one more time. That's all I got. Can't push it no more. So now I'm going to pull it to be sure that key. See it a little bit right there. That key, that uh, clip that's on the outside right there is going to stop on the side of this case right here, preventing it from over traveling. So I'm going to pull the cable. And yep, we're good. So take my jam nut, screw it all the way in, and give me a wrench to tighten that up. Because whenever I move the cable back over there, it's, the cable's going to want to rotate, and it'll rotate in the housing if I do if I don't lock it down, which would move the adjustment of the fork. Also, that's why I told you on the dash to leave it loose up there, because then it'll go through the firewall to the dash. It'll position naturally where it needs to be. 
and once we get this mounted to the differential then you can tie the dash up locking some channel locks down on this hold the body here three quarter inch wrench lock that jam nut in place and you're good to go the uh, switch also three quarter inch there you go so pulled the old core gasket off because it's been compressed so many times it was starting to leak so I'm just going to use regular RTV to take care of business now but before we do that take your razor blade clean out the old gunk off clean up your gasket service real well then we'll use RTV go around that put everything in place I like to take a rag go right there so I don't get any junk inside the diff got my rag saturated with brake cleaner wipe it off good Now take a clean one, dry it off. Now before I put the RTV on this thing and button it up, I just wanted to show you guys how this kind of seats in there. You can see the fork goes into that collar. And on the bottom of the collar, you can see the wear pad is going into that groove. Well, the top isn't in there simply because I've kind of got it held back so you guys can actually get a view of this. So when you see all the way in, you want that wear pad, that plastic pad right there. I'll pop a little arrow in there. It's going to go at top and bottom of that groove. Then you push it all the way up on her, bolt it on, you're good to go. But as that fork moves back and forth, it slides that collar back and forth, engaging and disengaging those splines. So that's pretty much how she works. All right, let's put some RTV on this thing and button her up. So now we got this all tightened down and now we got all that excess cable we got to tie up somewhere so it's not rubbing against anything. Uh, still need to put my front drive shaft in. The reason that's out because I just put a uh, ring and pinion in this. New carrier, new locker, all that fun stuff. And up here in the corner and down below I'll put some links where you guys can check all those videos out. So I'm going to cruise over there and see what my options are for tying up that excess cable. I'll let you admit and I'll show you. So here's what we got. There's your locker cable. So here's what we got. Here's the posi lock cable coming out of the firewall, coming down under, now tied to the bottom of the frame mount for the motor mount. In hindsight, if I'd really been paying attention, what I had rather done is take where this came out, I should put it on this side of the fuel line right here, come over top of that motor mount, get junk falling by i ran it up over top of this and then brought it over top of the power steering hose here but guess what i'm not doing i'm not taking that back off just to do that then in the event i have to take that off anytime soon whatever whenever i do take it off i'll reroute all that but right now i'm not so for you guys watching this video that's gonna put one of these in Run it on this side of your fuel line, but pay attention though, your exhaust is right here, so you don't want too close to that. Get up on top of your motor mount up here and wire tie it up to your motor mount or go all the way around this right here. You can take a run of wire ties all the way around this right here, then wire tie this to the wire tie there, and you'll hold it secure. Does that make sense? sense? Sure, sure it does. So but I ran it through that hole right there, come out the top of this, zip tied it right there, and we're still good. Uh, before we go up front and look at what I did there, we're going to look right here. So here it's laying right smack on top of the pumpkin. So what I'm going to do there, I've got some 5 8 heater hose that I'm going to cut a length of it from about here to, I don't know, just get it off past the pumpkin a little bit. Split the hose in half, which I'll show you in a minute when I do it. Wrap it around that. That'll keep from this up here, laying on top of that, and wearing it out. Because you really don't want to tie it up or anything like that because it's, one, it's putting a harder bind on your cable, which makes it harder to actuate. And two, you, want, you don't want to secure it in case you got axle drop when you're out wheeling and stuff. So you want the flexibility of that cable bill to do its job and articulate with the axle and everything. So... So let's go up front and I'll show you where I tied it off at up there. Hey, 
hey, track bar mount come in handy for something. Let's tie it onto it right there. And then it loops back around, but make sure you're not getting into your pitman arm right here. It's not getting into that. Then it loops over on top of the pumpkin here. And like I said, I'm going to get that heater hose about right there to over there. I'll show you guys in a minute. I'm going to put the heater hose part on, and I'll show you what I did. Split it, get it started. If you just take and push, it'll feed it right on over. Then once you get that part, bend it back against the cut and feed it along the sleeve. And you see, do I need to feed it more? Yeah, it wouldn't hurt. I'm gonna set the camera right here. Yeah, you won't be able to see anything. Pull it back a little bit more so I can push it. There we go. And then we go like this. It's hard to look through a viewfinder to do this at the same time. There we go. Now I just take my wire ties and go about every, I don't know, four inches or so down through there. And it's all nice and secure and protected. Yeehaw! Hoses in place. Zip tie each end of it. Put one in the middle. And it probably wouldn't hurt to put one like where the middle of the middle zip tie is going to be. And right along in here or so. That should be enough to secure it from sliding off or also whenever it goes into articulation articulation that it may open up that split right there so if you got it all zip tied down you should be all good to go and it's sitting on top of the pumpkin right there and it is going to be prevent any chafing of the cable yay when you're under the jeep mounting the cad twisting your cable around getting everything situated that cable right there will twist and rotate if this is tight it'll kind of fight and bind against you so leaving it loose will allow it to move around, flex wherever it needs to be. Then once you get it secured, then you can tighten it up and you're good. Sweet. Then once you get all your cable tied up underneath the Jeep, now you can tighten this up and you're ready to go wheeling. Now, all over Facebook and in the forums, people talk about how these lockers snap, crackle and pop and all that kind of fun stuff. So what I'll do at a later date, I'll see if I can record some of the noise this thing's making and give some comments about how it turns right, hard left, whatever, and give you guys a little feedback. How do the lunchbox lockers act on the street? Then I'll go up on the farm, play a little up there a little bit, climb a few hills, and, well, just give a good, thorough review on it. How's that? So everyone, if you enjoyed this video, thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't, leave some cool comments down below. Be sure to share these videos on Facebook or wherever it is you see somebody that has a question about a particular topic that I've covered, share that video out. It helps them, helps me grow. It's a win-win for everybody. Peace out. Lady off.